Our goal here is to learn how to reconcile a bank statement, or in other words, to balance your checking account with your bank statement. What it really means to reconcile a bank statement is really just to make sure that what you have recorded for transactions in your account, that they all line up with the transactions that you're seeing in your bank statement. So it's really just to make sure that your records and your bank's records all match up with one another. So I'll walk you through the process of what that looks like. And this really is something that you should be doing basically on a monthly basis because that's pretty much how frequently you're going to get a bank statement. So what we are seeing here is a couple of different documents. So this document that you're seeing right here is going to be the bank statement for this sample person, Michael is his name. So this is his bank statement that he got. And you can see that the bank statement is for the month of November, as you can see for the statement period right there. The other document that you are seeing right here is you're seeing his check register, which he himself has completed and filled out for various transactions that have happened. Um, and you can see the dates of those transactions kind of range from mid-October until the beginning of December right there. All right, so what you should be doing when you are reconciling your bank statement is the very first thing that you should do is you should ensure that the transactions that you have recorded in your check register have actually gone through. So like if you've spent money by using your debit card, or if you've written out a check, that the money has actually been subtracted from your bank account. And then similarly, if you've had money put into your account from paychecks or you cash checks, you wanna make sure that's actually gone through into your bank. And so the way you can make sure that it actually has gone through is by looking at the bank statement that you get every month and then like checking it off in your check register. So what should happen here is you should take all of these six transactions that have happened between the 5th of November and the 27th of November there and make sure that, that they show up in your check register too. So you're gonna see right here that we have a deposit in the amount of $35 that should have happened and processed through the bank on the 5th of November. So if that did happen here, so this column right here has all the deposits and you can see that right here, there's a $35 deposit that um, happened. So what you'd wanna do is this column where there's check marks, that's what the check marks are for, is you should check off that row, just verifying that when you put a check mark right there, that that has actually processed through your bank. So you know like, okay, good, that, that transaction has cleared, right? We'll just do that for everything else that has processed through your bank statement. So you can see there's a deposit for $100. So there is a deposit for $100 right there. But you can see there's a check mark there already. So the reason why that is, is um, that means that that would have already processed. And if you look at the date for that, that actually was um, the 10th of October. So that was something that should have shown up on the October bank statement, right? Because we're dealing with the November bank statement right now. So we don't want to check that one off. So there's probably another $100 one. Yep. So right down here, there's another $100 deposit. So we can check that one off in terms of processing through the bank. All right. Everything else that has shown up on the bank statement are all withdrawals there. So we'd want to look for the next one, which is $158.08, which would be occurring right there. So I'm going to check that guy off. And then the next withdrawal is in the amount of $46.50, which is right here. So we can check that guy off. And then the next one is $74.64, which is right there. And then finally, the last one on the bank statement is $19.50, which would be that guy right there. All right, so now what you're gonna realize is you're gonna realize that there's gonna be some numbers that I'm gonna highlight here that don't have check marks next to them. So in the subtractions or withdrawals columns, there's four red ones there. And then there is this one in the deposit column that doesn't have a check mark in the yellow there. 
Yeah, so all of the red and yellow numbers that I've highlighted there are transactions that have not yet processed through the bank, right? So because you wrote $50, right, to go to Deepdale Country Club, like you wrote out a check to them, right? For 1763 but it hasn't gone through the bank so that probably means that deep deal country club like hasn't cast your check yet right so it actually hasn't subtracted from your account same thing might be true for the 18 the 29 10 the 15 and the 125 so what we need to do now is we need to reconcile your account or make sure that your check register is going to um, really balance so what we want to consider is we want to consider what your current bank balance is so if we look at your bank statement balance and we look at the ending balance, so after all of these new transactions have happened, what we should do is we should take your bank ending balance and make some adjustments to it because this bank ending balance, which happens to be 62823, has not factored in any of these withdrawals yet because they haven't, they haven't gone through the bank yet and it hasn't factored in that deposit, right? So if we do factor those into the bank statement balance, then hopefully it matches up to this balance right here, which we would call the check register balance because it is the balance for your check register at this time. And so if we do factor in those adjustments and it matches up, then we know that the bank records are accurate with your records and that would mean that your account reconciles or balances, which is what we want to have happen. Okay, so what you should do then is you should take the bank ending balance and you should subtract all of the withdrawals that have not processed yet. So what we call transactions that haven't processed yet is we call them outstanding. So these four red highlighted numbers are all outstanding because they haven't processed through the bank yet and they're also withdrawals, so outstanding withdrawals. And then if you add to that all of the outstanding deposits, which would be the deposits that haven't processed through yet, which would just be that one yellow one, what we would come up with then is we come up with what we call your revised statement balance. So what that means is by it being revised, it's now a fixed bank balance that factors in these things that haven't quite processed yet. So if that revised statement balance ends up equaling your check register balance, which we have from right there of 641.13, then we know that it'll balance, okay? So what I wanna do here then is I'm gonna to wanna to subtract all of the outstanding withdrawals. So I wanna take all four of these outstanding withdrawal amounts and find the total of them so that then we can subtract everything there all away. So in totaling those things up, we've got $50, $18, $29.10, .10, and $15 that we all want to total up. So we end up getting a total of $112.10 of withdrawals that haven't processed through the bank yet. And then we'll add the $125 of deposits and so now we'll do all of that. So we're going to take 628.23 minus the 112.10 and then add the 125. What that comes out to equal is it ends up equaling 641.13 dollars. So this right here is your revised statement balance and we're seeing that the check register balance of 641.13 is the same. So when that revised balance and the check register balance are the same, then that's good. Your records all line up. And so what we can say here is that Michael's account reconciles with his bank statement when that all matches up. So if this right here was not an equality, so the two numbers would be different, then that means the account does not reconcile. So you might have made an error or maybe your bank made an error or something like that that you're going to have to try to figure out. Okay. I just want to note here some of the common reasons why you might have transactions that haven't processed through your bank quite yet. So just note that whenever we call a transaction outstanding, that just means that it's unprocessed. It has not yet really gone through the bank yet. And so I'm just going to kind of distinguish between an outstanding deposit 
versus an outstanding withdrawal. So if you have an outstanding deposit, that means that you have tried to deposit money, but it hasn't really um, gone through the bank yet, right? You're trying to deposit money, but it hasn't gone through the bank. So some common reasons why that might happen is it might need to wait until the next business day. So like you might go there at 4.28 p.m., like two minutes before the bank closes. They don't really get to it or um, can't process it. So it might wait till the next business day or oftentimes on a mobile app. Um, they might need to check over some things first before it processes. Um, nowadays, sometimes it's really just automatic and might go through, um, but that might be a common reason why you might have an outstanding deposit. Um, in terms of outstanding withdrawals, so if you are taking money out of your account, then you are withdrawing. And a common reason why it might be outstanding is you might have a check that you wrote out, but the person or organization that you wrote the check out to has not yet cashed the check yet. And so it's just kind of sitting out there. You know you wrote out like say $60 to that person, but they haven't cashed it. So that means you haven't really actually lost that $60 from your account. All right, so I just want to kind of end at the bottom right here with just kind of a general formula to reconcile a bank statement. So whenever you are reconciling a bank statement, you want to take your bank statement ending balance and then adjust it based on what transactions might not have processed yet. And you'll come up with your revised statement balance. And so if we call your bank statement ending balance B, you're going to want to take that B value, your statement ending balance, and factor in the outstanding transactions. So if we call D the outstanding deposit to total amount, and then we call W the total outstanding withdrawal amount, then the total outstanding deposits would have to be added because they are deposits that haven't been factored into the ending balance yet. So they need to be added to it and then subtract the total outstanding withdrawals. What that then will calculate and compute is it will calculate what we call your revised statement balance. So the fixed statement balance, if we call that S, okay? So once we do that, if also S equals your check register balance, so what your check register, your records say you have, and if S equals R, so if both of these conditions hold, okay, then your account will reconcile. So if you compute S, right, and then R ends up being a different number, then your account does not reconcile and your check register is not balancing out with your bank statement.